Hello YouTube, it's your boy B3's Nuts, I got him, back with another kicking TV show reaction review. This one's for a streaming show. Uh, WandaVision, it's WandaVision, you, you read the title, I don't need to play it up. But uh, yeah, this was a show I was pretty excited for, and uh, honestly, it's one of the most unique entries into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. WandaVision is a Disney Plus exclusive web series not web series mini series is what i meant to say christ it's a mini series it's nine episodes and uh and it's not it's not a season because if it was a season that would imply that there could be more seasons but one division's done uh ooh. so let's talk about it let's review it that's what we're here for i am a big Vision fan, and Scarlet Witch in the comics is crazy, but she's dope. Uh, no More Mutants is actually one of my favorite comic book quotes of all time. Uh, for, like, the starting of House of M and stuff. And this show is very, 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 very loosely based on that uh, House of M, No More Mutants thing. Basically, just the general concept of Wanda warping reality to make a new world. Except she, in this show, she only does it to a town. Uh, and we're going to have full spoilers from this point on, by the way. So when I went into this show, I was like, there won't be a villain. Wanda's mental illness will be the villain. There will be no physical villain. That was my thought. Then two episodes in, in my mind, I was like, okay. Ralph is the villain because Agnes keeps mentioning Ralph and we never see him. Then I was like, oh, the acting director of Sword is the villain. Nice. <coughs> Not a super villain, but still cool. And he was kind of a villain. But, like a side villain, really. Uh, and then Agnes, who was my favorite character uh, for most of the episodes, actually, there was this huge reveal that she was behind a lot of the things that were happening in Wanda's reality. Uh, like, pretty much every bad thing that happened up till the point of her reveal was basically Agatha who I did not predict because I don't read a lot of X-Men because X-Men since its inception has been way too crossover heavy and it's a cost of fortune to keep up with X-Men honestly uh if you're reading one X-Men book you're reading multiple X-Men books to understand it a lot of the time or at least that's how it was when I was younger and didn't have all these gray hairs but uh it still seems to be that way today very much so so i don't read a lot of x-men i didn't even know who agatha was which was awesome as a comic book fan i've found a lot of the mcu to be very predictable i know what's gonna happen uh, i predicted thanos before the after credit scene of avengers and then as soon as i saw him in the after credit scene i was like okay we're doing infinity gauntlet nice to know and we did uh, so, like, Agatha was a great choice simply because she was difficult to predict. That being said, at post-reveal, Agatha wasn't a good villain. She was very generic. Um, like, her personality and her behaviors were very cliche. Uh, Agatha was not a good villain. Her reveal was done incredibly well. In fact, Agatha's reveal went over so well that the song that revealed it became a hit and she confessed to killing a dog in cold blood and the audience didn't even care. For an audience not to care about a dog being murdered in cold blood, that takes a lot. So, I mean, that was some reveal. Probably one of the most successful villain reveals of all time and one of the most memorable there's a dog uh but yeah 
But then the next two episodes, Agatha was not much. She kind of just created the flashbacks that showed us uh, Wanda's whole story in much more detail. And there was a big reveal within those flashbacks about the sword director telling some lies. Telling lies. <sighs> that was an old reference. That was oof. But... Uh, you know, I thought it was fun. So, the first, like, few episodes are all homages to different eras of sitcoms. Starting with the 50s, because that's when sitcoms started. Television came about in the 50s, uh, and sitcoms came with it. And then each episode was a different, uh era of sitcom all the way up in, uh, until current day kind of meta fourth wall talking to the camera as if you're on a reality show sitcoms like the office and modern family and stuff uh and it was fun we got wanda's uh twin boys i i did predict that they would disappear by the end and they did uh her and Vision's twin boys were also made by her reality powers in the comics. And they also did dissipate in the comics. Her boys appeared to be Wiccan and Speed. Wiccan is cool. I would love Young Avengers in the MCU. I think Wiccan is a dope character. I didn't know who Speed was. I had to look up Speed. <laughs> Quicksilver was in it. Um, he was played by the actor from... The X-Men movies, which is pretty wild. That was like a billion dollar cameo. <laughs> pretty insane. And this is actually the most expensive uh, quote-unquote TV show ever made. It had movie quality special effects and sets and stuff. Uh, so yeah, pretty wild. We also uh, really got to see the range on these actors. Oh my gosh. Uh, Olsen and Betty, they did a fantastic job. Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Betty showed their range in this because they had to act like a 50s couple, then they had to act like a 60s couple, then they had to act like a 70s couple, and they were, like, adhering to how sitcoms of each of these eras were. It really showed their... It really showed their metal as actors. They're both very talented. They're both very talented. The Vision's makeup looked entirely practical. It wasn't, uh, but it looked that way. Pretty cool. Uh, we also got the inclusion of White Vision. And I was expecting a White Vision-esque thing to happen. I was expecting Sword to make a new android from, like, schematics of Vision, because they took him apart illegally, and I figured they were, like, figured out how he worked before Wanda stole his corpse and brought it back to life. But then it turns out Sword was lying the whole time, and she did not steal his corpse, and Sword just still had it. Uh, and they made White Vision, and White Vision was a thing that happened in the comics. Uh, and while I was watching the finale... And White Vision was like this emotionless but really powerful being that just took orders. I was like, that would make a perfect, perfect substitute for Sentry in a Dark Avengers series. Dark Avengers is the one thing that I want from the MCU. If the if 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 freaking Kevin Feige and the boys and Disney and Marvel all approached me and they were like, name one thing you want in the MCU and we'll add it. My, I would so quickly just go dark Avengers, dark Avengers. Uh, and I actually have a plan on how that could happen. Cause hammer is apparently going to be back for armor wars and he could take the iron Patriot mantle and start the dark Avengers. But white vision would have been a perfect placeholder for century. Cause century kind of just took Norman Osborn's, aka Iron Patriot's orders in that comic, but he also had, like, heavy emotional outbursts, and White Vision later on could have been, like, 
having similar things going on. You see what I'm saying? So, White Vision could have, like, had memory flashes, which made him very emotional and possibly violent, because he's, like, remembering Thanos ripping the stone out of his head and other, and other things. Uh... And he could have made a great substitute for Sentry. I love Sentry, but I don't really think he has a place in the MCU. Not gonna lie, he's a character that's... I just I just don't see him really working with the way the MCU is. Also, like, he isn't even really the best character, to be completely honest. I just think he's fun. And he's got dope powers and a dope look. But I... I that that potential for white vision seems like white vision is just going to be another vision maybe uh we did get the creation of spectrum who's a pretty cool hero uh she was apparently set up in captain marvel i haven't seen captain marvel it's it's the only movie from the mcu i haven't seen i haven't seen captain marvel and i haven't seen all the netflix stuff i haven't seen agents of shield or agent carter so there's a lot I haven't seen, but I've been able to understand pretty much everything without seeing most of those. But I probably should have watched Captain Marvel for this. I probably should have. Uh, but the show's really well written. There's basically no action until the final episode. All the episodes are really good. Like, really good and interesting, and mysterious, and suspenseful, up until the final two, the next to last episode is, it's, it's just flashbacks to Wanda's life, and in the final episode, the finale, a little disappointing, I have to say, you know, it could have been better, most of it's a slugfest, most of it is Wanda, and Agatha trading magical blows, and the two visions fighting each other. Although, I gotta say, the two visions fight had a really cool ending. Like, neither of them could get an upper hand on each other because they had the same powers and, for the most part, the same mind and stuff. So it was very hard for one of them to one-up the other. And then they started a philosophical debate and the debate ended the fight. And it, that was pretty cool. I really liked that. I was like, huh? And it kind of set up a future for Vision in the MCU. We also got Wanda finally becoming the Scarlet Witch. Uh, she kind of unlocks her full power, gains more control just kicks the crap out of Agatha. But it seems like in the MCU, the Scarlet Witch is the name of this foretold sorceress who would one day, her chaos magic would grow so powerful that it would just bring about the end of the world. And Agatha was, for one thing, trying to stop that, but, it, but she wasn't a good guy by any means. Agatha wanted that power for herself because she was like, I can control the power and I can be super powerful. But it seems like Agatha's main power is actually just stealing magic from other people. But then uh, Wanda tricked her with some runes, which was awesome. Good job, Wanda. That was very clever. Uh... <laughs> Very nice. And then she unlocked her true power and Agatha was like, you have no idea what you've just done. You're going to end the world. And then Agatha uh, got white Martianed. Uh, they JLA'd her ass. Remember in Grant Morrison's JLA, the Justice League was like, I don't think we have the capability to imprison all these white Martians. And... They, so what they did was they like altered the White Martians' minds to make them think they were human so they would just live out human existences. Uh, and she kind of did that to Agatha. And she like she got rid of her reality warping cube around Westview and set all the people free when she found out how much she was really hurting them because she was in denial about how much she was hurting them. 
And she just put that hex on Agatha. So the town was set free, but Agatha was made the wacky neighbor. The wacky nosy neighbor uh, cliche. <laughs> Which was hell. And I was like, jeez. That's pretty wild. And it seemed very malicious, actually. And it almost seems like Wanda's on track to become just full-blown villain. We got a mid credit scene at the end of this and an after credit scene. So there's a heartfelt goodbye to her children and her husband before they get dissipated when she removes um, her reality-bending hex. Because she loses her whole family once it's gone because they were tethered to it. They were part of it. And the first after credit scene is like a scroll coming up the spectrum and being like, you want to go to space? <laughs> and I was like, that's probably setting up Secret Invasion. Uh, which I believe has already been announced. And then the after credit scene, that was the mid credits. And the after credit scene was Wanda reading through this dark magic book that Agatha left behind. And then she hears her children screaming out for help. And I personally think that is setting up for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. But I think it's setting her up to be the villain. I think Scarlet Witch is going to be the villain of Doctor Strange 2. I think she's going to do all this crazy stuff to get her boys back. And it's going to fuck with reality. And Doctor Strange is going to be like, now, hey there, we got to slow down. And they're going to hit each other with magic. And that kind of makes me a lot more... I wasn't excited for Doctor Strange 2 at all. Uh, to be completely honest. But now I kind of am. Not for Doctor Strange, but for Wanda. Definitely for Wanda. Uh, she was very cool in this show. It was a very enjoyable show. We got to see uh, Darcy come back from the Thor movies. But now instead of an intern, she's a doctor. Which is pretty cool. Uh... Maybe we'll see her again in Thor Love and Thunder. I'd say probably. Her return was very well received. Uh, people really seem to like her. So I think she'll probably be in Thor Love and Thunder. I actually thought there would be an after credit scene setting up Thor Love and Thunder. And uh, I don't think there was. I don't think it was set up really at all. Uh, but WandaVision was a very good show. It's easily the most unique entry in the MCU. The special effects are pretty good uh, for just special effects in general and really good for TV show special effects. Uh, Disney has openly said they want to focus on streaming instead of television and theatrical releases, and they've definitely committed to that with high-budget stuff like this, The Mandalorian and etc. I cannot wait for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. When they were announced, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was the one I was kind of most excited for because I figure it's going to end in Falcon Cap. Team Falcon Cap. I'm not Team Bucky Cap. I am Team Falcon Cap for many reasons. I can make a video about that at some point as well. But uh, thank you all very much for listening to me ramble about WandaVision. Hopefully I can get this video up on the day that it ends. Normally, it takes me like 24 hours to upload a video from my phone because I have no internet at home and my town ha as a whole has no signal. But I'm dog sitting right now because I obviously don't live in a place this nice. Uh, so hopefully their good internet will let it upload quickly. But yeah, One Division, nine episodes. They're all worth it. The finale may be a little disappointing, but I feel like it sets up Wanda as a future villain. Her outfit at the end of the show, when she finally gets a Scarlet, like an actual Scarlet Witch outfit, it looks evil. And she's got all this red in her eyes. And it looked like she was using just straight up evil magic in the after credit scene. I think she's going to be the villain of Doctor Strange 2. I think she's going to be the villain of Doctor Strange 2. So that's it. Thank you all once again for your support. Uh, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. The next TV show reviews I will be doing are for Pacific Rim The Black, which came out the day before recording this, and I haven't had a chance to start it. And also uh, 
Power Rangers Beast Morphers Season 2, which I need to watch as well. So that's it. Thank you all once again for your support. And I'll see you all next time.